Okay, today we'll look at a couple of larger models. Now, yesterday's video talking about the Trumpeter Vampire sort of got me thinking a little bit whether um, there's a little bit of a unfair expectation on certain model companies. Because what I will say is that I built this Hurricane 124th Trumpeter many years back. Um, I got to some part of the construction phase. I happened to use up a little bit of leftover paint on a wing just to start the process of covering that. And then it just got hung up on the ceiling for years and years. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some problems that I had on this. But while I was building this, I did not have any problem with thinking that it was a bad kit by any means. A couple of little problems here and there, but um, not like the immediate view of that vampire. So, my point with that is, trumpeter and trumpeter are not necessarily the same thing, just as airfix and airfix are not the same thing, just as... Tamiya has, um, you know, quite an odd number of problems on that F4. And yet other kits are really, really good with nothing to fix. Now, is that because if we were talking in restaurant terms, they've changed chefs. The guy who designs the model, um, the quality of the design process. From the little bit that I saw about the current way that Airfix works is you've got a number of uh, chaps who are pretty good with CAD and they're, they're individually responsible for a particular model. But inevitably that might mean that a model from this guy and a model from that guy are not the same dish so to speak. Now with Airfix they may be quality controlled to be much closer, hopefully. Um, I don't know what happens with Trumpeter over time, but certainly this is a kit that I would be happy to continue. No problems with it. So, there are good Trumpeters. Now granted I haven't measured this up and I haven't analyzed it, but visually and build wise everything good a um, little bit of little bit of um, less attention paid on my part to getting that joint right this was a kit that I was doing very very fast I got it at a good price and I just wanted to whip out a 124th hurricane fast and um, one of the th and I kept the engine out, so that was the one thing. I closed it up. I didn't want to waste an engine under covers, and I wanted all the covers to be on. I wanted it to be one piece. And again, same as my Mustang, it was going to be in. Ah, uh, no, this one. Can't remember if I was going to do in flight. I think this one might have might have been planned for undercarriage down. Can't remember now. Ah, uh, no, no. Oh, I might have kept the prop blades off for the engine and hence put it like this for the airframe model. What I didn't plan on was that the airframe needed the exhausts on and I didn't plan for the correct structure inside to be able to put those exhausts on. And um, I, I did a particular fix and it was not good and I had to break the exhausts out. So that still needs to be done. And then I've got the Spitfires. I've got two of these. <coughs> I think slightly different boxes. I just found this box now. Very poor box art. And at the time of de-sprewing this, I didn't think that, I, I wasn't aware of any problem, nothing looked looked odd. Now granted, if one actually goes and looks at all of the panel lines and, and all of that, one may come away 
with uh, differences from the actual aircraft. That sort of thing I can live with. Um, I might be less inclined to accept it from Airfix because Airfix has close ties to museums. They've got access to it all. Um, there's no real reason to have a fault from Airfix. Trumpeter, I doubt they have access to it as easily. May, I don't know. But anyway, it's time that I build the 124th Spitfire since I have two. And I think it'll be a good build. So two, two of these models, Trumpeter, I think are really good. And I suspect that things have changed significantly in Trumpeter between the time of these models and I, I don't know what the date is. I have no idea. And I haven't looked at reviews on this kit. Um, there's again unboxings and builds but not, I haven't found a analysis of the kit. So. I'm not a Spitfire expert. I have got tons of material on it, but um, not in the same way that I have with the um, Texan, with the T6. But I think that it's actually time that a Spitfire started getting a little bit of attention. Um, now, it is worth noting, talking about the quality of models, and this wouldn't count for all of Monogram for sure. But that Monogram T6, which I like so much. You know that I, I, I cannot fault it on anything more than possibly the landing lights are not easy to get on. They're those clear molding parts. That kit is just so good. It is, it is for what it offers, a medium quality. When I say medium quality, I mean it's not broken down into a zillion parts. It's not attempting to be a um, 20 years in advance of its time model. It is just very well done and everything that it did was faultless. And then I immediately hear, yeah, but raised panel lines. Well, I mean, okay, if you don't like raised panel lines, um, make that fault number two then. Um, keeping in mind that I don't, I don't know who was doing recessed panel lines at that time. That that kit is pretty old. Um, Matchbox was doing recessed panel lines, but they were recessed trenches. So while I still enjoy Matchbox, um, they're not that those recessed panel lines are, are sort of in a class of their own. They they're more of a characteristic of Matchbox. So you know that that T6 sort of stands out to me, and maybe maybe I'll regard this one as quite similar. This um, Spitfire, we'll see. I'll, I'll I'll put in an acceptable effort, but not a great effort. And I don't have the Spit I don't have the Airfix one to compare to, and I didn't particularly have a um, a, a desire to purchase the Airfix one. I I've just got enough big stuff. Well, i rephrase that. I don't have a lot of big stuff, but the amount that I have is enough. I've still got Hercules and things to build. Um, if you have ideas on the best methods to verify, other than looking at YouTube videos, because that only relies on the other person's opinion, and on three view drawings, so I do have th I do have three view drawings. They're not scaled exactly to that. Um, I can I can give it a look and I can see. But if you've got other ideas, uh, by all means, or if you've got information, um, somebody that's actually put out a list of faults in the same way that they did on that Tamir Phantom. Because that's the one thing I like is when when a lot of guys have built a model and they're very particular about it, uh, eventually a list emerges out of the situation to to state you know all the little things to address. Um, the channel got monetized today. 
which means that there will now be adverts on the um, on the videos and I'm I'm mildly interested to know your thoughts on what it's out of my control on what what videos they, they uh, what what adverts they thought were interesting for my channel probably not not very relevant um, I, I will pack out the parts for this Spitfire, but it's going to need more space than this. Because um, I'd like to do a little bit of a, a detailed look at it and start start putting it together. Keep in mind the last Spitfire, the last 124th Spitfire built was 1983 or 4. The, the first airfix one so it'll actually be quite nice to have a, a nice uh, Spitfire again that that early airfix with its undercarriage that could wrote um, you know um, retract and uh, it's moving ailerons and that you know that was great for that time but it's not something you'd want on a kit now um, that was quite a job at that time I, I did think that was the most difficult model that I've done, especially because of the heavy weight of the parts and you know, with that lesser experience on getting good glue joints, with all of the gun panels that kept on popping off. Um, quite a I'm not sure what my most challenging model is up to this point. I'd have to sit and think about that. I'd also have to sit and think, what do I regard as my best model at this point? Um, and speaking of best models, um, my channel, you know, it, it's it's not a channel that's going to only present you with the perfection models, the, the models which went through the mill and came out looking excellent, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that that ends up in various stages. But there's interesting modeling related to it, like the little tiger moth, um, but, you know, far more than just that, um, where the the visual appeal of the model is not not nothing particular to write home about. But the modeling content of it was very, very interesting. Um, and then also. Um, the I've, I've got that typhoon, which is in a whole different, you know, sort of class of its own. It's almost too much, to be honest. This this Spitfire might be the perfect amount of parts and structure for a one twenty fourth. The the um, the typhoon might just be, but it's it's good for it's good for. Um, People that absolutely love all the detail in in a particular aircraft, as would I in a Harvard, if if they did if they did a Texan or a Harvard in that, I'd love as much detail as possible. But there is sort of that sweet spot for your average builder. And then um, just winding back to Trumpeter, the the amount of sales that that a company like Trumpeter might get with a model like the 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 the, the vampire you know they their market could just be emerging modelers who who don't care or even know that that it's not exactly that correct so it's almost only more your more analytical builders that will not want to build that or, you know, I'll build it. Um, I said I'll build it and I'll put it next to the um, Airfix one and we'll see what it looks like. But uh, does it make me hesitant to buy anything more from Pr Trumpeter in this current era? Yes, it certainly does. I, d I don't even know how many I've got. I don't have a lot at all. But these two I regard highly, my two Spitfires and this, um, and this Hurricane. Um... I think that's about it all for today. I'm going to go and get back to the um, that little vampires coming on nicely. Oh, that was an interesting thing.
So that um, the little decal set that I found for the vampire, which is not for that kit vampire, looks like it got wet at a stage, poss probably from damp. And all the decals are silvered on the sheet. So it looks like the certainly the, the glue of the decals is non-existent. So I'm going to try and see if decal sole and decal set are good enough to get that essentially wasted decal set, but a nice little vampire set nonetheless, still usable. So I will I'll cut them out as one does, wet them, get them off, but knowing that there's no glue on there. Um, add, add comments if, if you think decal sole and set will do it alone or if um, I'm trying to think if there's something more decal fix I haven't used decal fix have, have any of you used decal fix humble I think I've got a bottle of that somewhere but I mean that's going to happen pretty soon because that little um, that little vampire will get sprayed I found out I had a m m mistle is that the right word the French French Air Force version which I thought was just a different name but I see the intakes are slightly different they don't have the vertical veins so I built that one as well um, not in a rush I thought it would be nice for another vampire version and I don't know if that's the only difference looks like it they give a separate sprue for mist mistle 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 um but I've, I've always liked the, the vampire. <clears throat> okay. We shall get to the workbench and do a bit of modeling tonight. Cheers.